Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to worship, those of you who are worshiping in person and those of you watching online. I'm Pastor Maggie and welcome to worship. An announcement before we begin, Vernon Barr has been put on hospice and we will hold Vernon and his family in our prayers later in the service. Today is Christ the King Sunday and it is the last Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday, we will start will be the start of the new church year as we celebrate the first Sunday in Advent. As the last Sunday in the church year, I would like to offer some space to acknowledge what this year has brought for all of you. There have been a lot of changes as you walk together as a congregation through the call process and called me as your new pastor. You have also welcomed other new members, new babies, and you have donated money and resources to different drives. You have a new website. You have laughed together and held each other in prayer and love. Well, at the same time, you have lost loved ones, witnessed environmental destruction, endured sickness and disease, experienced a turbulent economy, and a world still navigating the aftermath of COVID. In a nutshell, life as always is complex, and at some times it can be quite unsettling which is why this Sunday, the last Sunday of our church year, I would like to open, instead of words from scripture, scripture, with a poem by Jan Richardson, followed by our moment of silence, to lament the things we have lost, and to also give thanks for the things that God has provided, to center ourselves with one another and with our Creator. I invite you now to relax and to listen to the words of blessing in the chaos. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring, a stilling of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest, will not let you hear your life with wholeness or feel the grace that fashioned you. Let what distracts you cease. Let what divides you cease. Let there come an end to what diminishes and demeans, and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos, where you find peace you did not think was possible, and see what shimmers within the storm. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us boldly confess our sin in the presence of God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, 
God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who pours out goodness and mercy, that your sins are forgiven. Amen. We will now sing our gathering song, O Day of Rest and Gladness, number 521. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you are an ever-present presence journeying with us as days become years. You are there in times of bitterness, brokenness, and devastation. You weep with us and listen to our cries. You are with us in times of joy, laughter, and hope. You rejoice with us and bring us peace. Meet us where we are at now, however fragmented or whole we might be, so that we may listen to the groaning of the spirit and to the silence, knowing that you are present in it all. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherded my people. 
It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judea will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, by joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or power, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, in the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. According to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and children can come forward.
Well, good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Does anybody remember what I said today was at the beginning of church? Yes, the last Sunday. Very good listening. So today is our last Sunday in the church year. And the last Sunday of the church year is always called Christ the King Sunday. Do you ever think of Jesus as a king? Have you heard that before? Yeah. But the gospel we just heard, if you were listening, was kind of hard to hear. It didn't really sound like Jesus as a king because it talked about Jesus' death. And death is kind of hard to talk about. How do you feel when you hear the word death? I feel sad too, yeah. So sadness, it hurts, it makes us feel a little troubled, right? It's really hard. So how about this plant here? Do you think this plant looks really healthy and alive? No. <laughs> no. So we see that this plant doesn't look so good. But what happens with Jesus, yeah, you have a question? No? Do you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> so what happens with Jesus when Jesus dies is he kind of turns death and everything upside down. Woo! Oh no, I didn't realize I had water in this. Okay, so there we go, it got turned upside down. And what do we find on the upside down side of Jesus' kingdom? What is this? A heart. So this heart here represents, what do you think? Jesus, and what do you think Jesus has for each of you? Love, yes, so God's love. And it also talked about in the gospel today about paradise. So what do you think of when you think of paradise? A vacation? Yeah, someplace nice and beautiful. So this heart also represents paradise, where you are always invited into God's kingdom. My microphone's being funny again. So this heart represents Jesus' love, Jesus' forgiveness for each of you, and Jesus' kingdom and their invitation into paradise. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. So with Jesus, even when we are sad or hurt, we always have what? Uh-huh, Jesus' love in his heart. Should we pray about that? Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kingdom where all are invited, where all are forgiven, and where all are loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much. Try not to slip on my plant. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. We started out this morning's worship by blessing the chaos, by hearkening back to all that has happened in this past year. We acknowledged pain, hurt, and loss, and we acknowledged joy, life, and love, because that is what we do together. We journey together like birds migrating together. We come together in word, song, prayer, and at Christ's table because we are a community of faith. And faith, as I mentioned last week, is more than a space because faith lives in each of you. But the only way to make this possible was because of the great sacrifice that we heard today in a very unsettling gospel. A gospel that I'm guessing many of us would rather not think about on a daily basis. As thinking about Jesus' journey to the place called the skull is very unsettling. In this place, Jesus was mocked, offered sour wine, and then crucified. And yet this is the scripture that was specifically chosen for Christ 
the King Sunday, a passage that doesn't portray what many people would think of as a king, but instead is a passage that mocks Jesus as the King of the Jews. But as so often happens with scripture, what we expect to happen doesn't happen. And when we think we know what a passage is getting at, we are shown a different way by the Holy Spirit. Because God is always unveiling things to us in new and different ways. Because the word of God is alive. And it is relevant to our lives today. And sometimes to understand what that relevance is, we need to go back into scripture to dig around to what was living and breathing in those pages that were written so many years ago. Which, if we are looking at the gospel, usually involves, well, Jesus. And the gospels are jam-packed with stories of Jesus healing the sick, forgiving the sins of others, and caring for the poor and the oppressed. We see Jesus as prophet in word and deed, who shared God's love for all of creation and who taught us valuable lessons, such as to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Such a selfless, love-filled life, seeking out others, showing kindness, forgiveness, and grace. And this is the way that his life ends. Instead of him being lifted up, loved, and shown some grace, Jesus was betrayed by those who were closest to him. He was mocked, laughed at, and yelled at. And in these final moments of humiliation, hatred, and imminent death, what did Christ do? Well, if we go back to the passage from today, we see that all the way through and through, his response was always, forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Because forgiveness was one of the reasons that Christ became flesh, which rings true to the very end of the passage today, when Jesus says to a convicted criminal, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now that is radical forgiveness. Forgiveness that is so far out of my comprehension that I can't even grasp what happened there. And even though I cannot grasp the total and complete forgiveness of God, even though I cannot grasp all that God has done for God's kingdom, I can tell you that one thing is for certain, that this is a kingdom that I want to live in. Because God's kingdom, as demonstrated through the life, death, and resurrected Christ, is a kingdom that truly embraces radical forgiveness, unceasing grace, and the love of God that surpasses all understanding. Because the kingdom of God is a different kind of kingdom altogether. And just like the gospel was turned on its head today, challenging what our view of a king is, the kingdom of God continues to surprise and delight us in unexpected ways. As the kingdom of God is not like any earthly kingdom, there are no elections or politics involved. Because the kingdom of God was not created for a king to simply reign. The kingdom of God was created for you to be embraced in God's radical love. Showing us that the kingdom of God was created because God chose each one of you to be a part of it. And the most beautiful part of this kingdom is that God has chosen all of you and many, many more people, showing us that together we can embrace the kingdom of God right now, on earth. Together we can show forgiveness, grace, and love to others, which is what we prepare for together 
every single Sunday. All are invited to the table and to hear the words of Christ. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Bringing a moment from over 2,000 years ago, across time and across space, for you, so that you can know without a doubt that you are forgiven. Forgiveness that becomes your invitation into paradise. The kind of forgiveness that provides hope. So that when life becomes difficult, exhausting, or seems downright impossible, you can remember the hope found in Christ. Hope that Christ provided in the worst moments of his life to a stranger and a criminal. Hope that is radical enough to cross time and space and become a part of your being opening in you a glimmer, a shimmer, or even a sliver of hope in the storm. So if this morning, when you looked back over the past year and discovered your own feelings of unsettledness, if you found your life to be more filled with chaos, loss, and heaviness, know that in Christ, a new year always awaits. And while that final new year may be years and years off, sometimes the church new year simply lies here with one another. Because the start of the church year ushers in the greatest hope of all. The waiting, watching, and preparing for Christ, for the birth of Christ. The night that birthed everlasting life and hope into the darkness. A holy darkness that allowed for the star to shine. To guide the journey of all who wandered, waited, and watched. Because what was birthed on that night was the kingdom of God. A place where all are welcomed, forgiven, and provided with the promise of paradise. Amen. We continue worship with our hymn of the day, the Canticle of the Turning, number 723.
stand as you are able to profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for your creation, for the snow and the unique beauty it provides, it brings, and for the new habitats for your creatures. Help us to accept the ever-changing landscape around us and to become the best stewards of your creation that we can. God of grace, leading God, as the winter snows begin to blanket the country, we pray for safety for all. Provide those in need with, with resources. Provide people without a house and a place to stay with no food, to, with food to fuel their bodies. Equip those who have the tools to provide safe roads, sidewalks, and parking lots. Help us to slow down, to embrace caution, and to look out for the other. God of grace. Gracious God, bring an end to unjust systems, war, crime, suffering, and hatred. Unite people in conversation, respect, and love. Instill in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace work of international collaboration that seeks the goals of health and the joy for all people. God of grace. Amen. Holy God, we pray for the families and friends who lost loved ones at the horrific shooting in Colorado Springs last night. We ask that you provide them a place to mourn, to grieve, and also to know that you are there with them in this. And may they be filled with your love. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for all who are hunting these next few weeks. Keep them safe and out of harm's way. God of grace. Mothering God, you immerse us in your never-ending grace, love, and forgiveness. Help us to find the hope that Christ provides, to live into the next church year that you have prepared before us. May we always know that you journey with us and that Christ is the one who promised us paradise. God of grace, eternal God, we pray for Vernon Barr, who has been put on hospice. May you provide him comfort, peace, and love. May you be with each of his family members as they journey alongside him in this difficult time. Fill each of them with your love and the assurance of your promise in paradise to all of your children, that in you there is nothing to fear for nothing can separate us from your love, God of grace. Merciful God, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Today we especially lift up Pat Paisky, Marilyn Grunenwald, Kathy Reisman, Pat Plunkett, Robin Hine, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, abiding God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all the members of St. John. May you meet each person where they are at and infuse their week with hope. We also lift up this week's prayer ministry. Emily Cooley, Tammy Walter, Jamie Kickbush, Keith Colby, Don Procknow, Britta Rowe, Amber Frostman, Peter Soybert, Brian Landwehr, and Brooke Ho Hovey, God of Grace. With great heart, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share the peace with one another however you feel comfortable. Please be seated and we'll continue with our offering. Before we begin communion, does anyone need a prepackaged communion they would like to take in their seats? If so, raise your hand and an usher will bring it around for you. All right, then please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this 
in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you wanting to take the prepackaged communion, I invite you to open the wafer side and to hear these words. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Now I invite you to open the juice side and to hear these words. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you wishing to partake in continuous communion, we'll do continuous today where the ushers will invite you into the middle and form one line. You'll receive the bread from me and then go to your corresponding sides for the juice. And there are baskets on each side for your cup to be discarded in. And um, I now invite the communion assistants to come forward. And we have gluten-free uh, available on request as well. And for all to come taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. Nourishing God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with this bread of, from heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. And live in us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have lots of announcements today, but most of them are wonderfully exciting, so do pay attention or you can take your bulletin home with you. Today we are having our annual pie auction right after worship in the fellowship hall, and you are invited to say, buy a pie, stay for fellowship. This Tuesday, November 22nd at 6.30 p.m. will be our Thanksgiving Eve service. All are welcome. Monday, December 5th at 6.30 p.m. will be my second, uh, Pastor Maggie's second book club, where we'll be, we'll be discussing the book, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved by Kate Bowler. Saturday, December 10th at 9 a.m., we'll be decorating the church for, and the church for Christmas and decorating the trees. If you are able to help, you can join us then. Monday, December 12th at 6.30 p.m. will be our blue Christmas service. So it's a new thing for St. John, and it's prayerfully cultivated by me for those who have lost loved ones, for those who find holidays to be a lonely time, and for those who would like to spend more time in prayer. This service will have candle lighting, music, prayers, and a sermon, and all are welcome to that. Tuesday, December 13th at 5.30 p.m. at Carmelo's will be the Sisterhood Christmas Gathering. Happy hour will start at 5.30, which will be followed by a dinner at 6 o'clock. Per tradition, the evening will end with a white elephant exchange. Donation for the women's community will also be collected. Please sign up in the narthex to help us plan accordingly. And the sisterhoods who are planning this look forward to seeing you there. And if you have any questions, you can contact Brooke Schindler or Kelly Rose now. And then also under the announcements section in your bulletin is a specific section called Christmas Program and Fun Holiday Events. So if you have a youth in Sunday school, please take note of these dates. It has Christmas Program practice, as well as a fun event, a pizza and a movie viewing party where everyone is invited on Thursday, December 22nd, starting at 5.30. I know those were a lot of announcements. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May God, our creator, prepare your journey. May Jesus, our savior, guide your footsteps. May the spirit, our breath of life, strengthen your body. And may the three in one watch over you on every road you follow. Amen. Let us conclude worship with our sending song, We Are Called, number 720.
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.